And hello, this is Johan Berin, founder of Green Furniture Broadcasting from Malmö, Sweden at the Southern Sweden Design Days. And uh, my topic here today is making places matter. And I will give you design principles for placemaking, for making places matter, for involving people in places and public places. And uh, I'll share with you how we have found the design principles of engaging, of making an impact, uh, of coming closer to people. So this is what I'll talk to you about for half an hour. Um, we just listened uh, half an hour ago to Joachim of Green Furniture telling about our circularity uh, strategy and how we work circularly. That is also recorded and uh, you can watch this afterwards. So uh, I'm uh, right here in the center of Malmö. Uh, this is our office. Uh, I'm sitting in our little studio uh, right here in the center. Uh, and you can see Malmö Central Station on the side. And it's very nice to be able to reach out globally to you uh, from Malmö like this. That's the, the advantage of, uh, uh, of the digital world now. And we actually have, have I seen uh, attendees to uh, this uh, little session uh, all the way from Australia, India, and on um, many places in Europe. Uh, nice to have you here and very welcome. So looking at the public place um, and what it was before, uh, this is uh, New York Grand Central Station. And uh, you can really tell that here is something special. Here is the start of the adventure and it really was at the time. And I'm, I'm afraid we have lost a little bit of that in society. So we have gone very practical. We have gone very operational. And this is what uh, a new station can look like today. This is London Bridge Station a few years ago. Um, but there is hope. And, and this is uh, the placemaking. Uh, then how can we make a place like this engaging? And how can we make people want to sit down with their newspaper, want to slow down, want to uh, be in this place, bring a coffee, um, uh, meet their friends and, and uh, take the coffee here instead of in town before taking the train. And we actually got the opportunity of furnishing this place, London uh, Bridge. And I'll tell you more about why this feels nicer than the image we saw before. What are the factors behind? Uh, another example, this is London Gatwick. Uh, airports and uh, it looks like most airports do. Um, you know, uh, it's not something you will notice probably. You'll walk through there um, uh, and, and they go to your gates. That's, uh, that's what you expect from an airport. But if it could look like this, uh, it would be so much more engaging and maybe you would actually uh, come a little bit early to the airport because you know it's a nice place you don't want to you don't want to rush and there's nice food and beverage around uh, it's something that you can recall so what is it then that uh, makes it memorable and puts a place in your memory of the place i and green furniture had the opportunity of starting this journey at stockholm central station uh, almost 10 years ago and uh, we um, could furnish the central, main central hall of Stockholm Central Station and had a very demanding good customer in that and developed this series of furniture, modular, um, fitting to the public place and learned a lot from that. And from there, we have rolled it out over the world from Swedish stations to London stations and stations around the world, really airports, shopping malls, schools, and healthcare uh, around the world. Um, and uh, trying to make places look and provide a feeling like this, um, making it memorable and making it a nice place to be. And that memorability, what, what does it come from? Um, and looking at the architecture and you see here London Bridge and being in line with those buildings is something very essential. It makes it more useful because you actually use the building better, but it also makes it natural to that place. And you hook up uh, with that building architecture, with the building flow, 
uh, of passengers uh, or visitors and uh, uh, you become a part of the architecture going around up around a pillar like this for example um, and uh, then being in scale bringing in stockholm central station as an example again if you are in scale with that large room you're able to make an impact and and i would say almost anything that you would put into this room of the size of the room will make a wow when you enter first uh whoa what's this and if that also can be nice when you come closer then you have created a sensory liaison to people and and it will be a wow and satisfaction uh, when it comes closer and looking at a few other places, uh, this is Everglades Cruise Terminal. You can see that this is really also in line with the building. It, it, uh, there is a wow and in line also with the structure of the ceiling and, and so forth. Um, and could that then be taken further? Uh, can we make each place more unique? And there is then the term sense of place. And this is then an image from Iceland. It's a meandering river in the in the volcanic landscape of Iceland. And how would you then uh, deal with this and bring this into a public location of Iceland? So you feel that you are actually in Iceland. Uh, so you feel that it is a nature destination and uh, bringing memorability into that. Uh, we got that opportunity some five, six years ago. and. Uh, this is what it came about. You can here see that meandering river. Uh, you can see the colors of the stone and the lava and the ice. And you can see the natural materials and the natural shapes of the nature destination Iceland. So they have gotten their particular setup uh, of colors and shapes uh, to provide that feeling. Um, and I'll show you a few more examples of that. This is Nice Côte d'Azur Airport in France uh, and their sense of place labeled La Plage, the beach, um, where you can really see uh, the dunes and the beach and the waves uh, also coming, going together with that champagne bar in the center. And you can also see the difference to the classical uh, airport seats on the side. And another nature destination is Hobart Airport on Tasmania, Australia. Uh, where you really feel those natural materials and natural shapes, uh, also having a tree in the background of green and natural color. Um, so that sense of place and being unique and picking up local elements of, uh, of the destination, of the place where you are, are essential. And then when you come closer to the furniture, to the place, um, what do you feel? What's the sensory contact? And also on a middle distance, is it a soft uh, turning shape? How can you make it more, well, making, having a soft shape there, making it more humane, making it more natural. Uh, it's also not essential in, in connecting to people. And when you sit down and you can actually touch that wood and feel the fibers and maybe even smell the wood, uh, your, your, all your senses are there and there's a nice touch to it. Um, an image uh, of that, of the softness uh, from actually from uh, where I'm sitting right now, this is our office just outside my window here in the studio, um, being able to sit under those soft uh, woolen trees, the leaf lamp trees from Green Furniture, um, it's also the soft touch and having that also stressing the acoustic uh, the acoustic effect of a nice place. Uh, in the shade of these trees, there is an acoustic uh, hideaway, a room, a little room in the room, and it con contributes also to the whole acoustic of the of the place. And less echo is really something that makes us feel good and takes away a stress factor. And looking at a few more images like that, uh, here you see also that uh, the leaf lamp tree, uh, also with a seamless table to it, and stressing then uh, 
the next uh, factor in taking this further. We have the soft touch of the natural shapes and really taking this together uh, as a whole term of design, uh, speaking about biophilia. Biophilic design is so strong, um, emotionally connecting to us. We all love being in nature and that is where, where the, the, we de-stress the most and feel the best. And there are loads of, of uh, uh, studies showing this for offices, for other public places, how uh, we feel good, we're less uh, sick, we're, uh, we just thrive um, as uh, human beings. And those biophilic design elements, it's really a lot about materials and shapes. Also plants, real plants, or as you see here, uh, the leaf lamp trees as a plant, having real natural materials and uh, connecting to that and uh, making a live environment uh, in contrast with what you saw before, straight lines, hard technical materials, uh, making it soft, uh, humane and natural. And I'll, sh I'll tell you more about really how the effects of this has, has have been on, on public places. I'll give you an example uh, in a little minute. So uh, generosity in this is also something speaking to us. So uh, uh, when you enter a public place and you feel that, um, that the place owner have actually invested in you and provided something extra for you, it can be uh, a nice place like this, making something uh, specifically nice, but it can also ex be extended to, oh, there is a, that's really a place where I can extend. Uh, and uh, preferably if you see this in an airport, for example, it can be a little bit off uh, the bustling activity of the center of the commerce. Uh, and then a way of providing a, a more quiet place, but also commercially to attract people out to the outskirts of that commercial environment. Um, so I think that's also a, a valuable uh, effect of making something generous and um, surprisingly nice. Um, and when you do that generous uh, offer to people, they actually uh, tend to react in a, in a very respectful way. So if you, if you make a really nice place to, uh, to pupils, uh, they will also, for example, they will also take care of that place. They will feel it's of their own and tagging will be less, uh, vandalism will be less. Uh, this is ho a whole positive uh, spiral going around. So I think that's also very important to uh, to remember. So the generosity, and that can also be providing a place to rest where there wasn't before. So uh, looking at it from the other side that you had a very large and generous recliner here of the Nova C series, uh, but also the very space efficient perch that you can stand up having. So you can actually fit it somewhere where, where seats did not fit and provide a little place to rest uh, on a surprising place and very space efficient. And then talking about inclusion, and this is really a big and super important topic. And uh, uh, right here in Malmö, Copenhagen, there will be uh, the Europride event uh, very soon, in uh, just a couple of months time. And I think this is also very important to hook up with. So how can inclusion be showed? and practically made in a public interior like this uh, and using furniture. And here you see an example of being in line with the standard seating, in line uh, uh, with what you normally see and just having a higher place with more arms uh, to be able to sit together. Also, if you have these needs, to be able to sit together with your family, to sit uh, like everybody else, not standing out uh, uh, and, and in that way, uh, showing that, oh, I'm so uh, old or whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm in line with the public. I'm just, I just have other needs. Um, and in the same way, for a wheelchair, having a place in line with the rest of the seating, inviting, clearly indicated, I think it's very uh, important. And you could, of course, uh, show 
uh, this the senior places, the higher places. Uh, also in some, you could make them stand out with another color. You could have larger signs uh, on the back of these. Um, but I think you should do it only on some of the places and leaving some just being higher, being like the rest of them. So there is a variety of very clearly indicated for people to find clearly and other places, just a, a variety of heights and arms uh, and comfort, sitting together and sitting uh, alone, uh, working, having a coffee, uh, or just uh, enjoying the place. And uh, looking about at inclusion, there is also the family side, uh, also the kids, uh, providing uh, an area, maybe on the side, on a little bit more quiet uh, place, where parents can sit and where children can play. And that actually can also be functional, uh, with room for people, with room to stay, and you could sit, the kids could sit on this also reading um, uh, or watching a comic, looking at a comic. Um, so uh, on the inclusion, and I think that we should also bring in the pride colors here. The pride has become a symbol of inclusion of all kinds, really, and I think pride colors can be used uh, really to show that we care for all and everybody is welcome. Um, and I think we should. And this is then uh, also just a few hundred meters away from here where the town has painted their, their um, outdoor seating uh, in the Pride colors to really show that everybody is welcome in Malmö for the Pride show in a couple of months. And um, I will tell you uh, just a little story about that inclusion as well. And this is from even earlier than the first Stockholm central image that you saw. Uh, so the very first contact I got to have with a railway station and a public place like that. Uh, Stockholm central station have a little uh, waiting room on the top floor. It's very small, uh, but it's the only waiting room on that level. And this was um, a problem to, to, um, the, to the station. Um, here there were long dwellers, people, maybe homeless people, um, more or less living here. This is a, a nice and warm place, of course. Um, but it's difficult then to, to have this at the same time as a good place for the travelers. And, and we have seen in very many places where railways try to block instead of try to making nice. So if you can make a place uh, really inviting and extra nice, you will attract the travelers in there. And uh, it's a possibility really to, to be together and uh, also to, uh, to keep nice. I think also the, the long dwellers here will also have another, uh, another uh, view of this place. They may still be there, but they may also take um, uh, there, there may be a common respect between people here. And this has really worked at this place, bringing in greenery, uh, bringing in nice uh, soft seating lines. And uh, they also had sound showers on, the, so on several places with bird sounds, good carpet, good uh, lighting and everything. It was the best place to be uh, inviting for all. So I think it's really a great example of how, how it works. And it's 10 years ago and it's still there. Uh, every, everything is still in very good shape. Also the plants uh, behind the seating here. So that really shows also when you make something extra for people, they will also respect it. Um, and another example then, um, and showing really the, the quality of the place. So um, uh, another story is also from Malmö. This is the emergency hall of uh, Malmö University Hospital. And um, uh, some five years ago, uh, this place was five year old only. It's, uh, it's quite a new and nice building built purposely for this. But the furniture that was there before uh, didn't cope longer than that. Uh, and they were really falling apart. And when you entered them, the hospital like this, the first thing that you saw was something broken and not very hygienic either, really. So uh, when you enter a place like that and see this, what kind of quality can you expect 
on the care in this place. So I think it's this is really um, the public waiting room like this is really uh, a shop window to the activity there and to the hospital like this. And when we got the opportunity of, of furnishing here, um, we, we could really go with the curvature of the building. We could make something uh, of all these factors, the, the human factors, the softness, the biophilic, making it a nice place. It may be harder to sit on, but the, the intention here is really not to sit for a long time, is to have a welcoming first uh, contact uh, with the care to come into the process and then to be led further into, into care. Um, and also I'll um, show you uh, the sustainable business model example of this, as this is actually, actually a function rental. Um, so uh, it, was, it was made possible for the hospital to take this uh, as we could offer uh, uh, a guaranteed function and a guaranteed also quality over time. Uh, so they are actually renting uh, furniture as good as new over time, as long as they need it. Uh, so uh, as a furniture supplier here, and with the good, the good um, learnings from the public other rooms, from like railway stations, uh, we could really offer something well-maintained and well in shape uh, over time. So uh, this is five years ago, and uh, uh, this place really uh, still looks very very good and as good as new and uh, I hope you're not ending up there as it's the, the emergency hall but if you do uh, I hope it will also be a nice first impression of the care and speaking about that long lasting um, this is another place in Malmö bringing it out here this is a school uh, the new Latin school where actually my oldest daughter is and uh, we got the opportunity of furnishing this, this is some seven, eight years ago. Um, and uh, the, the image though, it's taken much uh, much longer. I believe it was after three or four years, they have been there and I was there myself inspecting and, and, uh, and with the photographer and, and could see how well this furniture had been preserved. There was not a scratch. Um, and, and um, even though they weren't even maintained. It's a very nice school, obviously, in the center of Malmö uh, with nice kids, but, but really uh, this is showing the effect of, uh, of, of caring about nice things. Um, and also when you can then maintain them as, uh, as showed here, uh, where scratches are filled in uh, annually, uh, keeping a shape like new, um, which may be needed here now as well. Uh, you can really keep something, keep that feeling, uh, keep that respect over a long time, which is really important. Uh, also, the public locations need to be in good shape to to avoid uh, the uh, the window effect. Uh, I don't know if you've heard the the broken window effect. Um, if there is a broken window on a building. People on the block, the kids on the block, will be likely to break the other windows as well. Um, but if there is no broken window, uh, even on a on a deserted house, who is the one to for, throw the first stone, really? And same thing with with furniture. If they're really in good shape, if you can maintain them uh, as good as new, uh, the very few people will start tagging on something like that, looking that good, and where they have been invested in. So that's the lasting part of it. And one of the last uh, items then is telling a story. And uh, I'll tell you here the story about our only little plastic detail on these furniture. Um, it's now made from post-consumer recycled um, ocean plastics and contributing to, to getting rid of that plastic. And when we put a price on that, uh, we will contribute as a company to fishing out that plastic of the ocean. So I, I encourage you all to really, where you can use this, uh, put it in there. It's a little bit more difficult to deal with uh, pressing these items, but it's definitely possible and worth doing. And this makes um, us being able to only serve 
circular materials, uh, natural materials or circular, uh, circular recycled steel and aluminum that can be recycled again. And that little plastic part as well, recycled that can be re uh, recycled again. So an example of a story to tell and something that actually connects people to the place. So this is well made. Uh, people have been thinking of the earth uh, doing this place and uh, uh, very important to, to connect, uh, tell the story. And all this really uh, comes up to satisfaction. So uh, uh, we have seen at places like London Victoria, London Bridge, uh, where satisfaction of waiting areas went from really poor 23% up to 80%, just changing the furniture like this. And at this place, Edinburgh Airport, from 52 to 81%, even though the furniture here before uh, was upholstered and much softer. This is still perceived as a as a nice place to be, uh, and the retail around this place really thrived. There was a thirteen percent increase of retail at Edinburgh Airport when we changed all the seatings in in the commercial area, which is really a huge amount. So it's thirteen percent of sixty million pounds annually paying the furniture in no time, really. So you can see the value of making, providing a nice place and creating that satisfaction. So with that, uh, uh, I'd like to end my presentation having a few minutes for questions and um, really stressing how important it is to invest in people, to make them, give them a nice place using all these factors of uh, creating an impact, creating a biophilic, natural impression where you can feel nice. And um, um, yes, here's an image from a, a railway station then. And here are my contact information and I'd be happy to see if there are any questions now. And uh, we have another couple of minutes. Yes, Yuan, can you hear me? Yes, okay. hello Adele. Hey, so there is one question coming and you've kind of touched it, um, comes from Nilesh Gandhi. Uh, which yeah. waste material is used to make these furniture? Yes, so very good, thank you. Uh, so uh, we are using waste material in the plastic that you saw here, uh, in the little plastic glider of, um, of the seating. And it's that plastic glider is there to protect the floor uh, when you push around the furniture so it, the floor shouldn't be scratched. So that is a waste material. Um, we also use recycled material in uh, the aluminum of the new Nova C series that Joachim showed previously here as well, and um, um, of uh, the metal, the steel in the, the Ascent series and the the, the Nova C series that you have seen on these images. This is the Nova C series. Uh, if you look at the tree here, um, this is a natural trunk, so it's not waste, it's directly from the woods and it's all natural uh, parts without actually any chemicals that, uh, involved at all. So it's all the part of the natural cyclic loop uh, as well as the wood in the, uh, in the seating. It's natural, a natural material that is then cyclic. So, uh, so these are the, the waste materials that we use, the plastic and uh, the recycled steel and metal, aluminum, and then also uh, uh, very important to use the natural, natural cyclic loop. And to tell you that also, these tree trunks are from our own plantation. So we plant a piece of wood for every piece of furniture and they have actually grown this big now so we can, we're able to use them ourselves in our own production so that's also a, just a an example of the the very local cyclic um, way of using the natural material thank you Nilesh and okay. uh, maybe we have a, another minute or so for a question good we have one question uh, another question uh, from Bruna saying, are you going to do or are you doing any surveys to get feedback uh, on the places you install before and after? You have touched this a bit before, but yeah, this is another question. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. so I think this is very important and, and we should do more um, uh, really check, checking before what is the status, asking people then uh, what do you need and then after um, uh, 
seeing how the reaction was and also being able to fine tune them. So if we see that, okay, the flow is not going perfectly here, or this is a place where people feel unsafe to be able to fine tune that and work with that, uh, uh, with, that with those poles. And there are, are also uh, technological ways now coming up to actually see how content people are and how the flows are are working. So this is something we've started also to uh, to work with, uh, connecting to the technology around the seating. And that's very exciting, I think. Thank you, Bruno. Okay, so our time is up. And uh, thank you, thanks a lot for attending. Uh, I'd be happy to continue the discussion afterwards. Here are my data. Uh, this has been recorded and can be watched again. And you, uh, I'm happy if you want to spread it and comment it and keep watching uh, Southern Sweden Design Days and the other events there. And thanks a lot. Have a nice, a nice day. Bye-bye.